Hi everyone and welcome on the CG Loon channel. I'm Romain and today I'm going to show you the breakdown of my car and some tips and tricks I found when uh, I was modeling it. So let's get started. So the first step is to check for references. Even if you're a professional since 5 years or 10 years, you have to check for references. So you can find some references on Google, you can also check some YouTube videos and if you have a little trouble seeing the shape of the car, you can also check some 3D model already made in order to understand the main shape of the car. So once it's done, let's jump into Photoshop and let's see what we've got. So here in Photoshop, what you have to do is to check your blueprint is right. What I mean by that is if the scale is the same for all the view. So you can either put rulers or as I do red line to check the scale because sometimes even if it's on good site it can be bad blueprints so make sure to get the right proportion and so after you do this we can we can import them into your modeling software for me Maya so let's get into Maya now so as you can see here there are all my steps I've made for reaching my modeling the purple thing you can see are my blueprint my my pictures were deleted so you cannot see imagine if they were there it was the blueprint I use in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how to import them and place them correctly. First of all, you have to choose your auto graphic view. For my part, I'm going to choose the front view. Then you go to view, image plane, import image, and then you have to choose your view. So it can be either the front or the back. In this case, it doesn't matter because you can move it after all. So just click on open and boom, you've got it. And now what you have to do is place it. So you can move it, scale it, now you have to import all the different view and what I'm talking you can see how I'm doing and be sure to put the same scale on each view. The first step I made was create a cube with the same proportion as the car. These things will help you at the end when uh, you finish your model to check if you got the good proportion. If not, you can move it and try to cheat a bit. For the second step, what you have to do is starting to create nerves while using your blueprint. You need to place each curve you can using your blueprint. And I'm going to show you right now how I'm doing it. So what you have to do first is select your view that you want to start off. So for my example, I want to start with the side view. Then you have to go to create curve tool and you can either choose CV tools or VP curve tool. It doesn't matter really, uh, you can try. You just have to click whatever you want to start the nerves and then follow the shape of the car. Then you can modify it and what you have to do is as much as you can follow the shape of the curve. So for the curves, once you create it, you can right click and choose the vertex mode and try to move it while checking the different view. You can move vertex and try to match the front view and the side view. And that's what you have to do for all the curves. And there is an example of how I will do it. So as you can see, I added some curves. As you can see, they are not matching perfectly the references. You can see it, but I said it to you. 
uh, for example the headlight is completely wrong but it's just for blocking up the nerves so this is not the easiest part of the project because you have to guess for some nerves where they are because on the blueprint you can see it so it's just about guessing and practice if you're doing your first car i suggest you to start with a simple car and try to do your best as you can see here i added a spoiler and if i can give you an advice is to be the more precise when you added your nerves because you can always modify it after that, but you're going to snap your mesh, your geometry on these nerves if you're doing something wrong. So as you can see here, I added the mesh. That's what I'm talking about. And how we do this, I'm going to explain you again. So there are many ways to achieve this modeling, but the best way is to just use a plane and snap vertexes on the curves. As you can see here, I'm just snapping the vertexes on the mesh and that's all. You can see that I got my perfect mesh. It's working like that. That's not very complicated, right? I started to blocking up the main shape, but for this car it's a bit complicated to do all the body of the car because it's a lot of complex shape. But generally you have to do the main shape in one block, not like this. But for this car it's a bit complicated. As you can see on this example, you have to do in one block. But for this car you don't have any choice, so you have to do the best as you can. Alright, so you can see a huge improvement. There is still some shapes that are going wrong. Uh, you can see my grid that I'm going to use deformers to deform it. Like, uh, for example, I will use latches or I can just use soft selection. So you can see my wireframe. It's pretty low poly. You can see some detail. The main goal is to get the main shape and don't worry we are going to mirror it at the end so just keep focus on one side and it's gonna be okay and by the way don't go crazy with the tiles yet we are going to do this at the end all right we are now to the end and i just want you to see the final result <laughs> So I'm just gonna show you how I panel this. So I just use triple engine, so it's not crazy. And by the way, there's still some part that I can improve, but overall I think it's a pretty good model. And now I'm going to show you some tips and tricks I found that help me a lot, so let's get started. Okay, so the first tip, and it's pretty famous I think, is to use a shiny material for C pinches, because it's pretty complicated to see with lumber so make sure when you're modeling a car or whatever you have that have nice curves to use shiny material it can be blind or even fungi so there is how i set up it so as you can see here it's pretty easy to see the pinch compare it to the lumber so make sure to use shiny material always so that was the first tip all right so the second tip is if it's very similar to the first one but it's more precise i will explain so what you have to do is to create a mesh diary so go to arnold light skydome light and then you have to use a custom mesh diary it's called the flow checker it's a very good mesh diary for seeing pinch so now what you have to do is just to create a um, standard surface material and you have to apply a metallic to one and then after that you can just press the little button right there use global light and now you can see all the pinching it's pretty colorful but it's very efficient So my third tip is how to avoid pinching because we see how to solve them. So now I'm going to show you how to fix them. So the first method 
is to fix with the end as much as you can the topology so even with the end it won't fix perfectly the topology so try your best but there is another method so the another method is to use sculpting tools so go to the sculpting shelf and use the second icon tool it's called the smooth tool and don't forget to reduce the strength because it can broke your mesh and now you just have to paint over the mesh We got a pretty nice result. We can spend more time on it, but it's not the goal of the video. So this was the first method I used frequently to fix my mesh. This tip is a bit more complicated, but it's more efficient. So what you have to do is just simply duplicate your mesh. Then you have to smooth it. It will subdiv your mesh, and then you can use the sculpt tool to fix it. It's the same method as before, but since there are a lot of topology, it will last different. Alright, so we fix it. So how you apply this high poly to this low poly? You just simply move it closely you can to the low poly. Then you, you can use selected object live for snapping all your points to this. And now when you're going to move vertices or edges or whatever you want, it's going to snap to the high poly. So now you can use soft selection. Just be careful that all your mesh doesn't break. On the screen you can see how I'm doing and try to do the same as I do. So moving vertices one by one. And when you think you're done, just don't forget to disable selected object live. And now enjoy the final result. Uh, another tip that I should start it with because this is the easiest but the less uh, efficient. So what you have to do is if I pull a vertex, you just have to go to edit mesh and click on average vertical. It will average your vertex and now what you have to do is just press G for repeat. You can do this many times and as you can see here it does the job. Okay, so another method, it's an alternative method. So what you can do is just duplicate your faces. How to do it, just select your mesh, select your faces, then duplicate faces, and you can smooth it and do the same methods as I said before. It's, can, it's pretty good if you can't duplicate your mesh cause it's going to crash or whatever reason, do this method. So you can just finish by the method I show you uh, before. Now the video is finished, I hope you enjoy it and leave a lot. If you have any question or comments you want to ask, feel free to, to do so in the comments. And if you appreciate this video and the CJLone channel, feel free to subscribe and I hope to see you soon. Bye!